welcome aboard the Bitcoin Express. My name is Chase. Let's get to it. There's a major problem in the blockchain space known as the blockchain trilemma. Everyone is trying to figure out how to solve this problem. The trilemma states that when it comes to blockchain, there are three main characteristics. That is security, scalability, and decentralization. But you can only have two at a given time. You can't have three all at once. For example, when it comes to Bitcoin, they have chosen security and decentralization. And for this, they had to sacrifice scalability or speed. That's why it takes so long for a Bitcoin transaction to go through. And the reason this is so is because when you have a decentralized, decentralized secure network, every time you make a transaction, it needs to propagate to the network. It needs to be sent to every node. And this actually takes time. Think about it this way. If you're on a group project or you're at work, and you are 100 people or 500 people and you need to come to a conclusion, it's going to be very difficult for 100 people to make a decision. But if you only have one person or even five people make a decision, it's much quicker. And this is how a traditional database works. There's a centralized party. So it's not decentralized. It's totally centralized. And because of this, a decision can be made on the spot. Looking back at blockchain projects, we see that Bitcoin, it takes about 78 minutes on average for a transaction to go through. And then we have Ethereum, a little quicker, six minutes. We have Monero, 30 minutes, Dash, 50 minutes. So although we see these speeds a little quicker, it's still not good enough. When we use the term scalability, we're talking about you know thousands and thousands of transactions per second. Six minutes, four minutes, it's not good enough. But you will notice there are cryptocurrencies that are very fast. You see Ripple, it's four seconds. You see EOS, 1.5 seconds. You see, ne you see NEO, 15 seconds. And these are very fast. So did they solve the blockchain trilemma? And the answer is no. Moving back to our chart, these projects have chosen scalability and security and sacrificed some decentralization. This is where it gets heated and there's a debate. A lot of people look at projects such as XRP or EOS and they say it's centralized, but it's really a gray area. Clearly, these projects are not totally decentralized, but at the same time, they're not very centralized like you would see in a traditional database. And to give you an example, we'll talk about EOS. So EOS has 1.5 second transactions very fast and they're centralized and decentralized. And this is what I mean by it. On EOS, there's only 21 nodes that have full power over the chain. So of course, 21 nodes can come to, agree to an agreement much quicker than 5,000 or 10,000 nodes. But the reason why it's not so centralized is because these 21 nodes don't just come out of nowhere. These 21 nodes are chosen by token holders who stake their coins and they can vote. So it's, it's, it's a gray area, like I said, it's not totally decentralized, but it's definitely not a 100% centralized. But centralization is not always a bad thing. Certain projects, certain use cases, they prefer centralization. When a company, for example, wants to use blockchain technology, such as Walmart, for an example, they want centralization because they need their project to be scalable. And they'll use a framework such as Hyperledger to achieve that goal. So when it comes back to projects that focus on being decentralized and secure, how do we figure this out? How do we get the answer to this trilemma? How do we scale? How do we get thousands and hundreds of thousands of transactions per second? The way we do this is with layer two or off-chain solutions. So these are methods or solutions that are off the main blockchain. So it gives us the ability to speed things up. With the Lightning Network on, on Bitcoin, the goal is to get Bitcoin transactions to thousands or even millions of transactions per second. And this is the way that it works. If we're using the normal Bitcoin blockchain, layer one, on-chain, every time you make a transaction, it takes at least 10 minutes, but it could take up to an hour. So if you can see the chart in front of me on the screen, a layer two solution, which is off-chain, and this, in this case, we're calling it Lightning Network, it's not on the main blockchain. So you can change or manipulate the rules and you can have thousands of transactions per second. So it's all happening off-chain. It doesn't have to follow the rules 
of the main chain. And then once these off-chain payment channels, once they close, then they can all be added to the main chain. And to give you an example or an analogy to help you understand this better, let's say you go to a store every day, you buy a cup of coffee, and every time you make a payment, the owner takes your money, they close the store for 10 minutes, and they go to the bank and deposit the money. So of course, this is very inefficient, it's very slow, and business is definitely going to slow down. Very few transactions happening per day. But the equivalent in the Lightning, I guess in the Lightning Network case, is instead of going every day, to deposit the money in the bank from these coffees, the restaurant, the owner, they have a method or a system where they collect all that money. They don't go every day to deposit it, but by the end of the week, they make one transaction. So they save a lot of time. Same thing with the Lightning Network. I hope I explained that. If I didn't explain it so well or you didn't understand it, put a comment down below and I'll try to further explain it, make that a little easier if that analogy works. So the problem is it sounds good in theory and we have been making improvements with off-chain solutions such as the Lightning Network. But it has shown that these systems or this Lightning Network, it's a little bit more centralized than we originally expected. And the reason this is so is because to run these payment channels, it requires capital to be locked up and only certain nodes have a significant amount or enough capital that, to be able to afford these payment channels. So there are some issues with these side chains, mainly the, it's centralization. That's the one people usually point towards. But the good thing is that we're still early in this blockchain space. It's such a young space. We are making improvements. We're finding out new things every day. And eventually, we will find a solution to the blockchain trilemma. I hope that you found value in this video. Go down below, subscribe to the channel, show your love. Thank you for listening, and I'll see you next time.